Well, hey, everybody, this is John from Watson Baptist Church. And sadly, because of the coronavirus, we had to suspend all of our church activities and worship services this past week, which was Christmas Sunday, uh, and going into this week, which includes Christmas Eve and Christmas itself. And we hate this. I This is why I am in an empty church right now. Um, normally for Christmas Eve or Christmas, we, we have the church open and we offer some sort of special worship service where people can come in and we sing hymns of praise, focusing on Christ coming into the world. And we pray together and we worship together and I, I preach a devotional and we maybe even do the Lord's Supper. But sadly, because of COVID, we couldn't do any of that this year. And 2020 has just been that year that keeps on giving. And so because we couldn't do anything here in the church uh, this Christmas Eve, I wanted to to offer up something. And so this is going to be a very special Christmas edition of Fun with Crafts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Christmas uh, picture that I really, really like, and I'm going to I'm going to draw and paint it out using some mixed media um, and then connect it with scripture and do a little devotion for you this Christmas. So check this out. So it took a little while, but here it is. This is an image and it's sort of based around Genesis chapter three and, and the gospels. And uh, this is not an original. This is a very rough copy um, that a pastor friend of mine shared on Facebook. And I was so moved by the image. Uh, I wanted to research it and find out more about it. It's called Mary and Eve. And it was done uh, by, I think a sister uh, in 2003. And I just like the look of it. It looks sort of like an illuminated, uh, cartoon print. And I, I would have used colored pencils, but I, all I had were those watercolor pens and some watercolor paint, some gouache. And so I just work with what you got, but, uh, you can see the details in it. And, uh, here you have Eve, that's supposed to be Eve. And you can tell that she is sad and crestfallen and she clutches in her hand, the forbidden fruit. There's the apple with the bite in it. And you look down further and you have the serpent and uh, its tail is coiled around her leg. And so she has fallen and she has sinned and is cursed. But then right next to her, you have Mary and you have uh, Eve's hand on, on Mary uh, touching her belly and Mary is smiling and you can tell she is with child and she is about to give birth to Jesus, to the promised one. And you can look at Mary's feet. And don't you just kind of love this image? You have the serpent and his head is crushed and it's trampled underneath the foot. So it's the image of two women. You have an image of the fall and the curse. And then right next to it, you have the image of redemption and the defeat of Satan. In fact, there was a poem that was written to go along with this painting. And I just have to read it. It's, it's supposed to be Mary speaking in the poem. And this is Mary talking to Eve. And this is what she said. She said, Oh, Eve. My mother, my sister, life-giving Eve, do not be ashamed and do not grieve. The former things have passed away. Our God has brought us to a new day. See, I am with child through whom all will be reconciled. O oh, Eve, my sister, my friend, we will rejoice together forever, life without end. Now, this image is not perfect. It takes one very big artistic liberty and I'll talk about it in just a moment, but I think it's pointing to the oldest Christmas promise in all the Bible. It's the oldest promise about the coming of Christ. Because right after Adam and Eve sinned, God appeared and confronted them. And then in Genesis 3, God pronounced a curse on Adam and Eve and also on Satan, on the serpent. But in God's pronouncement, he said this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He said, he said that his great champion 
His Redeemer would come into the world. He would be from the seed of a woman. God promised and said, I will cause hostility between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring, and she, he will strike your head um, and you will strike his heel. You see, the fall of man was Satan's finest hour. Satan deceived both Adam and Eve, and, and Satan thought he had won the battle with God. He'd helped bring the curse of sin on man, on the whole world. But Satan's victory was short-lived because Jesus is the offspring of the woman. Uh, because God promised a daughter of Eve would one day give birth to the champion. And he would be born into the world, and his purpose in coming, the Gospels tell us, was to destroy the works of the devil. And Satan would strike his heel, but that would only be a temporary defeat. When Christ died on the cross, he was literally struck in the feet and the hands by the enemy. He was wounded, but not defeated. And God promised that Jesus, born from the seed of a woman, that he would have the final victory. When Jesus died and rose again, he delivered a crushing blow to Satan. He defeated Satan and sin and death for us. And here's the thing, you know, you can a strike on the heel is painful, but it won't kill you. But no one survives a crushed head. And the cross was God's head-crushing blow to Satan. And I know that in this painting, the, the liberty here is Mary is the one crushing the serpent's head. Um, and she's not the one who does that. It's Jesus. He is our great serpent slayer. He is our champion. He's our redeemer. But he was born of a woman. Galatians 4, 4 through 5 says, When the time had come to completion, uh, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive the adoption as sons. So this Christmas, let's worship the Christ, born the seed of a woman, born of a virgin, who crushed our enemy and gives us the victory. Hey, I hope you have a wonderful and Merry Christmas.